day was the 40th of May, Tuesday. You know, uh, I think it was about 10 years ago, Barbara, when we were in Vanuatu, we were asked to speak in Vanuatu. And uh, I remember the village very strongly, even, even now I remember what took place on the 40th of May in Vanuatu. And not only in Vanuatu, I know that's it's been taking place in other nations, especially in my and my Polynesian nations do as well. But on the 14th of May is when Israel has its birthday. So the 14th of May on Tuesday was Israel's 76th birthday. And some of them say when we've been getting a lot of uh, things in that hour, especially with YouTube, they would say 3,000 years old and 76 younger. But you know, that is around David's time, but when you look at Abraham's time, it had to be around about 4,000 years. And then 76 years younger. And uh, the Lord, when, as Barbara mentioned, of the testimony we spoke on Christian uh, radio vision, Thanks, Judy and Thomas, for sending us that connection. And um, but the Lord spoke to myself when I was preparing. It was only about ten minutes or twelve minutes. So what's it? Ten minutes. The Lord gave me the scriptures of, and I, as I just waited on the on the Lord, I just said, Lord, what do you want me to do? I realised that it's. Israel's 76th birthday today, and in saying that it was taking place in Vanuatu, they, I remember them, I think it was, this, uh, no, that's right, it was the 60th birthday. So they said, happy birthday to Israel. The people from Vanuatu make this big cake. Now, if you think of the number and the, the numbers of population-wise in Vanuatu, how many would you say there was in Vanuatu? Quite big, so this cake was quite big that they made it so everyone had a slice of that cake in that village. So that was a blessing. And I remember Barbara and I showing when we took photos, we, we showed it to a uh, Jewish family, friends, we know, we know it over many years, we showed it to them, and uh, they just they just you know, how not only as a nation but the Pacific nations place for Vanuatu was um, they made this birthday cake for Israel. And so saying that, the Lord me took to, me to, to the scriptures of Psalm 76. And uh, it says in verse 1, it says, God is renowned in Judah. In Israel, his name is great. His tent is in Salem, and his dwelling place in Zion. How prophetic is that and uh, so 76 years of Israel's birthday and uh, it, was, it was such a blessing to be able to to speak on Christian radio but the testimonies of people right around the world as uh, we're still getting a lot of things and we get a lot of things that come you know, on the website not the website the YouTube This year also for us as a ministry, I'm not saying the 28 years of the ministry, but five years that the Lord has had us in this place. So we can thank God for his, um, for opening up this door to this city, uh, for us in this place. And when I was beginning to, uh, when I was asking the Lord, well, you know, we know number five is, is a number of grace. And the Lord also took me to the book here of John chapter 16. If we can go there, if you've got the Bible there with you. John chapter 16.
John chapter 1. That's it. John chapter 1, verse 16. So out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. So we know that five is the number of God's grace. But it's five times that five. Five times grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace, and truth came through Jesus Christ. So one of the last songs that we sung was God's amazing grace. And um, so I do thank and uh, honor the Lord for the five years that he has, has had us in this place. And, uh, you know, pretty things in his timing. His timing. Now, today, I don't know if many of you will be tomorrow, Pentecost Sunday. And uh, that starts tomorrow. So, Jenny, we would have been, we were asked to be in Melbourne, but it didn't, we just, it didn't happen. Uh, but people thought we were going to, we were going to be there. We, we, uh, Say the last count it could be eight thousand, but it's probably more, be more than that. That will be at this rally in Melbourne. And uh, so pray for that gathering in Melbourne. That importantly to the Christian Church, they would know that it's, that it's Pentecost Sunday. And pray for the streets in this and Melbourne as as, as the, the, the state of Melbourne that it would uh, God will do something. You know, we know Melbourne has been the place where the revivals, the revivalist has come, and we know the stories of revival that moved, moved uh, to Melbourne. And so we just ask and just pray that God will do something um, extraordinary. If nothing is impossible for our God, but all things are possible for Him. That what was meant for wrong, we know that God's going to turn around for good. So we see Pentecost, 50 weeks, uh, plus one, the day after the, uh, after the uh, Passover. So it's, it's seven times seven, it's 49 plus one. And uh, we know that our the God we serve, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, is in control of everything. So pray that a sweeping move of God's Holy Spirit will touch that rather and that there will be there will be people that will just cry out to God and that He will have mercy and grace. And uh, I know like yourself if you've uh, when you turn the TV on you see some very, very disturbing uh, situations. But I thank God for the Christian, I thank God for the praying the church of God. So we're preparing our hearts uh, for the, the rally, as Barbara mentioned, in Brisbane. We don't think they will get that the numbers of that, but we just pray that you know they've got trouble by counting numbers. So we just uh, pray that God will bring those that that are needed. So Pentecost, the seven weeks, or, or uh, sorry, the, the festival of weeks, and so we. Pray that God's Holy Spirit will be just poured out in such a way that a harvest of souls. I'm praying like yourself, praying for a for a harvest of souls will will, um, will come into the kingdom of God. That is uh, His holy presence. Lord, as we as I stand in this place and I, as I minister Your word, I ask and pray Your Holy Spirit will teach me and reveal to me Your truths. And I pray your Holy Spirit will teach and reveal all your truths to each one of us. Because Lord, that was your promise. And you can never lie, Lord. It was the promise of your comfort and your counsel of the Holy Spirit. You said you will not leave us as orphans. And Lord, you have given us the comfort of the counsel of the Holy Spirit who will lead us and guide us into all truth. And we pray, Holy Spirit, come. We say, Holy Spirit, come and have your way in our hearts today. Reveal, Lord, I pray, by the power and the anointing of, our Holy, of the Holy Spirit to us, because 
our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We have the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords living in us. We have your power. We have your, your life and power because you are life and you are resurrection. And we ask and pray, Lord, that you just pour out your amazing grace, which you will into our hearts. And into the life of this city, that this, the, this city, Lord, and this nation and the nations of the world, and especially Jerusalem, Lord, right now, would, Lord, I pray that a harvest of souls will come in the land of Israel. You said all Israel will be saved. And I ask and pray, Lord, for your covenant children where they have been dispersed in many, many nations, that they will, you said the promise of your word, I will plant my children in their own land, never again to be uprooted from the land that I have given them. And Lord, that is the promise of your word, that you are, you are restoring, that you are reconciling your covenant children. And Lord, what we are seeing in these days, we are just starting to see how the Christian church and the Lord, your covenant children working Lord, I pray together, standing together. And Lord, we, we just know that times are so short. Times are in your hands. No one knows, Lord, when you will come back, but only you, because everything is in your hands. Times are in your hands. You're appointed times. And Lord, I want to thank you for that. This day that you are pouring out, Lord, as you did in the upper room, Pentecost. And Lord, we just want to thank you and praise you that it can happen in our life and very, very soon. Very, very soon. So Lord, we thank you, we give you all the glory and praise. Thank you, Lord. The Holy Spirit, the work of God's Holy Spirit. To see your believers in salvation, it reveals God's ways, God's true ways. The work of God's Holy Spirit teaches us and guides us that we as believers we will know the truth because it's the truth that will set us free. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. The Holy Spirit, the work of God's Holy Spirit, when Jesus, the promise that Jesus left us, the comfort and the counsel, and we have the Holy Spirit, the Ruach Kadosh in us. So the Holy Spirit speaks to us in ways calls us into a greater relationship with Yeshua HaMashiach. The Holy Spirit, the work of, of God's Holy Spirit, it helps us to, to have the understanding, the discernment, to grow more and more in God's ways, in God's love, and in the fruits of the Spirit. And that's one of the things that I know myself and, and yourself, when you pray, you through your prayers, through your personal times of prayers, you pray in God's fruits of the Spirit. In the Ephesians chapter 5, verse, um, uh, what's it, verse... <laughs> I'm in the wrong book there. In verse 5, chapter 5, verse 22, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, fruitfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live in the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. And I know, like yourself, we pray in the fruits of God's Spirit all the time that we need the characters of God's ways in our lives and how, when we go out in, in public places. And for you and I, that time, uh, you know, the importance there that God wants you to come into more soaking services with Him. Soaking up in the presence and being in God's presence through prayer, prayer, through worship and praise, and just waiting upon the Lord and just being still in His presence. It's just like being at the feet of Jesus. You know, when you and I do more and more of that 
exercise spiritually that we will see God do great things in our lives. One of the things that I was praying as, as the family has gone down to see a loved one, a very close um, family member, one of the scriptures that the Lord uh, has given us as a ministry was praying over the Hankies. And uh, I believe it's in the book, The Revax, uh, when the family, Mum and, and Lillian and Deborah were heading down to inspire just mentioning about the book of Acts to write that scripture, praying that scripture, because we've seen miraculously what God has done. We prayed for people, praise God, that I remember probably about five, ten years ago, and they are still alive today. And so we can thank God for his mercy, thank God for his grace. And uh, so through your personally, God wants you to come into more of those soaking services, soaker services that we're getting. And just being refreshed, being so drenched in, in the presence. You know, as children, we used to love, we used to love the rain showers. When we grew up, we had from the table and standing out there. They, they were our showers, the rain showers. But, you know, we just used to love that. We used to just love soaking in and standing in the rain and let the fullness of the rain just come down as light as it is or as heavy as it is. And God wants to come in in each way and say, oh, 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 presence. This is going to say, hey, son, daughter, I'm, uh, as you just enter into me, as you just press into me, I'm going to just, as you and, and as you soak more and more in my love, I'm going to refresh you. I'm going to strengthen you. I'm going to allow you for the next journeys and the journeys that you, that I will lead you and take you on. So, having that, coming into more and more the presence of the Lord, praying in tongues, I remember Yong Yi Cho at Gyodi um, in South Korea, South Korea, and uh, they had this prayer mount, and when he would pray, I mean, the churches in, in South Korea, they would have seven services a day, and I remember when they just, you know, he would just go and pray and pray and pray and pray in tongues, and he just he just would just get up there and and he would just share what what God lays on his heart because he would just wait on the Lord he would just press into the Lord and I remember when we first went there Barbara and I and, and uh, uh, pastors from here Lillian was there also with us in South Korea but when we saw this church was so big seven day seven services. We got to five of them. We got to five of those seven services that they did. But the people were just so hungry. They were running up the steps. And I mean, these were people that was well into their 80s plus. They were running up the steps. Then here I was probably just like, I mean, I, I, there was a hunger in me. I'm not so, I'm not, but they were just running up here. I was just probably walking more casual. But I was still, I was still hungry to hear the word. I was. I was wanting that presence of the, of the Lord to just, just come and, and touch me in a powerful way so that I can carry whatever manifestation, whatever, whatever presence, the holy presence of God, whatever he was doing in, in that church, I, wa I wanted to take, I wanted to receive it for myself. I wanted to live it. I wanted to carry it more and more and more. And I remember the prayer service services that we would have when we would go to the place of the upper room. And Colin, you was with us in 2017, and we'd go in there, and we would be praying in tongues, and and uh, you was with us in 2008, and Elizabeth, yes, and Thomas and Judy, and uh, I remember when we were standing up where this the the prayer room, where the, the Holy Spirit was poured out on, on that time there of um, the upper room, we would be praying and we'd be praying, and all these tourists from all over the world, we had like this prayer time. Just well formed this big prayer tunnel, and we were going. I don't know what God was doing, but as long as we were obedient and praying in the spirit and just praying what God called us to do, and you know, when we do things, and I know when you do things, you just don't just get up there, just do it. You allow the Holy Spirit, the ruler of Joshua of God, to show you, and uh, you know, He makes a way, God makes a way where there seems no way. And now we're praying and praying, we're praying in the fire of God. 
that what took place in that in that, in that upper room and Pentecost and and, and the suddenly that as we begin to just come to that scriptures, let us go to that there and now in the book there of Acts chapter two. It says in verse one, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. And you know, as I mentioned, you can be, you can have those suddenly in your spiritual suddenlies in your own life. When you just sit at the feet there of Jesus, when you just wait upon the Lord, and uh, and He will show up. The Lord will show up. As long as you you move forward, as you as long as you allow the Spirit of God, as long as you catch that wave of you know, of God's holy obedience. That, that's where he would have you. When you minister to the Lord, he will minister to you. And that's the key. I remember Barbara was saying that to many, many years. As we minister to the Lord, he will minister to us. So there's, a, and like this heaven, the wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. So all together in that one place, in one accord, that as they began to just sing and worship and just press in, and that's how God wants us to press in, like that throne room worship, Throne room worship, having that worship time, you and, and, and the Lord, just just releasing scriptures, whatever the Lord has laid upon your heart, and just hoping that God is just going to just, you know, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is, is His love. But also Isaiah says, those who hope in the Lord shall renew this strength. And it's God's power, the power in God, the power in Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit. You have the three in one. You know, I might not be the best. I'm, I was not probably the best mathematician in, in, in the school. I was probably not the best math student. But I learned along the way. I would say one plus one plus one. What's that equal to? Three. But I say one plus one plus one equals one. You say, oh. No, no, it's, it is three. But see, the God, if we have the God, it is three in one. We have the Father God, we have Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And for people that work in our things, God is three in one. Son, Jesus said, I am I and the Father, we are one. And uh, it might take a while, but you know, it's... Three in one. God the Father, when He says to baptize at the Great Commission, go and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There you, there you have it. So hope in Romans 5 5, and hope does not does not um, put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us being given to you. So God's Holy Spirit, a very easy prayer is when you're praying and when you're praying in tongues, say, come Holy Spirit, come. God's Holy Spirit is living in us. And he wants us to be more like Jesus, transforming us. In the book of 2 Corinthians 3.18, if we quickly go there, Or if you just write them down the scriptures, that's quite all right. So 2 Corinthians 3.18. I'm going to pick it up um, in verse 16. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is 
Spirit. So praying and just praying, and as you begin to just pray, God's transforming us. He's shaping us. He's a master potter. We are the clay. He shapes us. Just as he said to Jeremiah, hey, you get into the potter's wheel, they are going to shape you. They are going to just form you. Though you might be just, just out a little bit this way, I'm going to bring you into all what I want you to. I've created you, as, as the Bible says, he's, we are created in the image of our Heavenly Father. So he transforms us. The Holy Spirit transforms us. The Holy Spirit of the living God brings that conviction of sin. You know, when you're just waiting, when, in, when the presence of when we're in the presence of the Lord, it's the Holy Spirit just beginning to say, Remember this, remember that, Norman. And it's the Holy Spirit that begins to just show us. Because we, we need to come before him in humility and, and allow that spirit of repentance or don't or identification of things. The Holy Spirit of the living God reveals the truth to us. So, you know, it's important that when you're going finding out things, when you're looking at things, that you come to the Word of the Lord because God cannot lie. His Word is truth. The Holy Spirit of the living God empowers us to evangelize. Thank you, each one of you, for your testimonies. Thank you, Shirley, for your testimonies of how the Lord is using each one of you in different ways. And, uh, you know, God, will, just that boldness there of, of the Lord will just come upon you and just say, hey, I want you to pray for that one. Hey, I want you to go and give an encouragement uh, word to that one. Hey, I just want you to tell that person there that, uh, that you know, you, you can just see them, you can see them lonely. I want you to tell that person that, say, hey, Jesus loves you. The Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit is through our worship and praise. The Holy Spirit will reveal things to us. The revelation will begin to just pour out into our lives. We'll begin to just see. It's just like those veils that's been just taken from, our, from us. And we'll begin to see more and more of Christ shining in us. He is the light of the world. In Him there is no darkness. The Holy Spirit leads and guides us to God's ways. Because His ways are always higher than our ways. And we need to be praying, as I said, not only praying in the Spirit, but ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, what would you have me to do today? Holy Spirit, what would you have me to, um, to do when I leave this place? What would you have me to do this whole week, Holy Spirit? Reveal yourself. We see God's power. God's power moving prophetically. We serve a powerful God. And, uh, you know, it's just like this room here. Your room. Your home. Where you live. We have certain uh, little batteries, you know, especially if I've got, we've got those little candles and they take certain batteries. After a while, they start to dim and you've got to go and, you've got to go, <laughs> have to go and buy some new batteries. Or your mobile phone's running low, you, you've got to go and charge it up. The natural power will decrease, but God's power will always remain. Those things will just dim. But we know Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. In me there is no darkness. So we need those things. We know when we, when we don't charge up our phone, we want to bring family, we want to bring friends, we make that support. The Lord thing, the Lord said this to me. The call that you make, don't miss the calls on your life that I make to you. That's important. Don't miss the call of God in your life. See, everyone here in this place and those that are listening to this service today, God's call on your life. He says, call upon me and I will show you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. And I pray that when there are many on the streets, I pray right now that the Holy Spirit will just invade the whole place there in Melbourne. 
And I pray and I believe that some of the stories are going to come out of, out of um, that gathering there tomorrow. God's word, word transforms the world. God's word can transform the world. God's heavenly power connected to you and me. And we need to call down his heavenly power. to that scripture as I mentioned in the book of Romans Romans chapter 1 verse 16 the word of the Lord speaks to us for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes first to the Jew then to the Gentile verse 17 for the gospel for in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. As we continually plug in and empowered into the, and transformed into God's heavenly power, and that's important, that you stay close to God. You have you have the power of God that is in you to strengthen you. But when we are weak, we know that we are strong in the Lord. Isn't it so, as Christians that love the Lord, to know that we have the invested power of God strong in our lives and healing in our lives, healing in our body? Matthew 28, verse 18. The power of God, the power of Yeshua HaMashiach. In relation to the Great Commission, I'm going to pick it up in verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mount where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted that Jesus came to them and said, All authority, not some authority, he says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Has been given to Yeshua, Hamashiach. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Trinity, the three in one. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you and, and surely I am with you always to the very end of age. The power of the Holy Spirit, as I read the scripture there in the book of Acts, we won't go there, in the book of Acts, uh, chapter 1, verse 8, you write that scripture there down. I want us now to have a look at the book there of Luke 24, 49. Thank you, Mark, for Luke and John. Luke 24, uh, verse 49, uh, Luke 24, I a little bit further than I should have. So Luke 24, 49, verse 49. This whole passage talking about the, the, the risen Lord on the road to Emmaus and where Jesus appears to his disciples. In verse 49 of that, I'm going to pick it up. Verse 45. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He said to them, This is what is written The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead, and on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sin will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of all these things. He says, I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power. From on high. The power from on high. Clothed. And uh, you know, clothed with garments of praise. Clothed with robes of righteousness. Acts 10 38. 
And it says how God anointed. So that's Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. And how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil. Because God was with them. You know, God right now is doing deliverance. So when God calls you to pray over those ones, what you see, just pray that God will give you discernment. And uh, as you begin to just protect yourself with the blood of Jesus and, and that uh, God's Holy Spirit and, and angels, the blood of Jesus, Psalms 91, just begin to just cover yourself before you go and pray for others or you're doing any deliverance. Just pray that God is with you. That his presence is with you. And uh, you know, I've seen people delivered just without me even praying. I've just seen when songs are just sung, even words just, just preached on the streets, and people are just preaching or singing, worshiping on the street. God is just doing things. God is doing deliverance right there. And uh, because you begin to just see manifestations there of, of, of what's happening. I won't go into those things, but it's. Uh, that you, you know that God is, you know, God is so powerful. Interestingly, this word regeneration, and God is beginning, beginning to um, reveal to me, and there, is, well, as I was, as I was beginning to pray into things, the Lord said that there must be uh, a spiritual regeneration. And that talks of a, a rebirth. And so I began to just pray, and I began to just say, pray, Lord, and, and, I, and, and pray in tongues, and say, Lord, pour out your Spirit, pour out your Holy Spirit, pour out that Spirit of regeneration, a spiritual rebirth. Remember the story that Jesus said to Nicodemus? He said it twice to him. He told Nicodemus, uh, he said, hey, you must be born again. You have to be born again. So that... That regeneration.